Hey, I hope you're doing well. Today we're diving into one of the most important strategies for day trading, the 2% rule. This simple yet very powerful rule can be a real game changer for your trading. So let's jump right in. The 2% rule is a key money management principle which states that you should never risk more than 2% of your trading capital on any single trade. Why? Because it helps manage your risk effectively. Let's take a simple example. Imagine you are trading with a $10,000 account. According to the 2% rule, the maximum amount you should risk on any trade is therefore 200. What this means is that if the trade goes against you, you're only losing a small portion of your account, the $200. In other words, the 2% rule keeps you in the game for longer and allows you to manage your risks smartly. Be aware that this doesn't mean you enter the trade with $200, no. This means you enter the trade with a position size such that you only risk losing at maximum $200. Computing the size of this position is quite simple if you follow these steps. First, you compute the risk amount. That's the amount of money you're willing to risk. In our example, that was the $200. This is equal to the total account balance you're trading with times the exposure. And the 2% rule tells you that this exposure should be at maximum 2 and we need to divide that by 100 because we've considered it as a percent. Then the final step, the position size you should take on is equal to this risk amount we've just computed times the inverse of what is often referred to as the stop loss ratio or stop loss percentage, where the entry price is the price at which you enter the trade, while the stop loss price is the exit price you've chosen in case the trade goes against you. Note the use of an absolute value there. This is to ensure this number is always positive, whether you're doing longs or shorts. Now let's talk about why this 2% rule is such a big deal. Firstly, it prevents you from blowing up your account. By risking only a small percentage, you won't lose a significant portion of your capital in a single trade. Secondly, it provides you with more trading opportunities. You can decide to risk smaller amounts per trade and therefore you would be able to have several open trades at the same time. Lastly, and you can't imagine how crucial this is, it offers psychological comfort. Indeed, knowing that you're only risking a small portion of your account can make you a more disciplined and calm trader. And that's worth a lot. I will illustrate the benefits of this rule with a striking example on TradingView. But first, let's get our hands dirty. I want to give you a very simple Python code that does the calculation of the position size. And I will put it on our GitHub so you can access it for free, use it in your daily trading, your trading bots, whatever suits you best. You can see that this position size calculator function reproduces exactly the formula that we described before. And therefore, as arguments, it takes the account balance, the exposure, the entry price, and the stop loss price. So let's apply it straight away to this example here. The account we're training with is worth 10,000 whatever currency you want. Let's say dollars for this example. The exposure I've set to 2. The entry price of the asset I've decided to trade is $100. And the stop loss price that I chose is $90. If I run this cell with a little shift enter, we get a result that is $2,000. And this number indeed means that you should enter the trade with $2,000. Let's use this simple example to see the effects of the stop loss price. And typically you will realize that the tighter the stop loss price is, the larger the position size will be. If I crank this up by five and run it again, you can see that the position size has doubled. But if I decrease it to 80, for example, then the position size becomes only a thousand. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, don't forget to click that like button. It takes a few seconds for you, but there's a world of good for me. Consider subscribing too. Thanks a lot. Okay, I think we've covered the background principles and the theory properly now. It's time I give you a real life example on TradingView. We are looking at the BTC USDT pair on a daily chart for this example. And this is really a textbook strategy that I'm considering here with some Bollinger Bands. Typically a trade is entered when the price breaks through one of the Bollinger Bands. And on top of that, I have a stop loss that I set as proportional to the ATR and a take profit that I compute considering a risk reward ratio here of one to three. And I also consider an ultimate exit if neither the stop loss or the take profit is triggered. And that is the opposite crossing of the Bollinger Band. If you have questions about all of this, don't hesitate to ask me in the comments down below. Let's have a look at the backtest results. At the first glance, we can see that we have quite a nice green curve. And in the end of the backtest, we obtained a 80% profit. Okay, 
But if we look closer, you do see that this curve is very choppy and you typically have big jumps where you lose quite a lot of your profits in a short amount of time. And typically the number that we see here, the maximum drawdown is very high, more than 56%. So in total, it looks like a profitable strategy. That's true. But actually, it would be very uncomfortable to trade. So let's now compare that with the exact same strategy, but now considering this position sizing computation. And as you can see in this example here, same strategy, but I've added this exposure that I'm setting to 2%. And if you're curious, let me just show you that here I did indeed add the computation in the entry. Now the quantity that I'm considering in this strategy entry, I have computed according to the correct formula. So let's have a look at the results now still a green curve and we can see that the total profits decrease from 80% roughly to 50%. Okay you might be thinking this guy has been chatting for five minutes about a magic rule that ends up ruining the total profits but that's not how you should look at it. The key things to observe here are actually two things. The first is the behavior of this curve. You can now see that we don't have as much big choppy peaks but what we get now is more of a curve that slowly cranks up in its profits and the second key thing to see which is completely related to that is this number here the maximum drawdown has now changed from more than 50 percent to now less than 10 percent and as a result of this we get this healthy growing curve why am i insisting on this healthy growing curve we go back to here let's imagine how we would have lived through trading this strategy at the beginning there's a few trades that would have given us a loss but okay not such a big deal we would have traded some loss some some wins but we're still profitable with respect to the beginning so we would have felt great imagine coming to here where we're almost at 4,000 USDT so almost doing a times four on our investment and within a few weeks bam we lose almost half of that can you imagine the psychology at this moment? And it's actually worse than that because you could have been even more unlucky and say that this period of a big drawdown could have followed this one here, meaning that you could have dropped somewhere down to here. And imagine you would have been even more unlucky and this period of drawdown would have happened just after that and you would have completely gone down. Obviously, the likelihood of having these periods following each other decreases with typically a 30% win rate. On average, you would have two losing trades for one winning trade. So this 56 maximum drawdown is way too high to have something comfortable and robust to trade with. And indeed, you can see that this strategy went really high and that's super great. But in the rest, say in the second part of the backtest, you can see that it slowly decreased in its profits to at the end finishing somewhere that you would have actually reached five years before maybe. But if you did follow this 2% rule, we see that the curve is completely different it did crank up up to here and you can see that indeed just like before didn't really adapt to the new market conditions in the second half but at least it safeguarded the profits that it kind of reached up to here you see it just oscillated around this sort of maximum if you want and you can see that because this maximum drawdown is now much smaller the periods where there's those big decreases that we saw before are now much smaller indeed in the end, this strategy is not that great. One can do much better than that, but it sure proves the benefits of the 2% rule. Please remember that this is not financial advice. This is just me sharing my personal experience. Please let me know in the comments down below if you already knew about this 2% rule and how you've been applying it so far. This was Robot Traders for you. All the best with your trading. Take care and see you soon.